All right, so here we go. Um, again, uh, for those who may have missed the previous video, I am individually putting on my spacers. They're out of Purple Heart. I am using a three inch uh, spacer in between the three inch pieces of uh, Purple Heart. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm doing this is it allows me one to glue them on, <clears throat> but I can go in on the inside edge in between these and actually epoxy it and I can do the edges and I can do the bottom. Um, I've stood up to here because uh, I was putting these on this morning. So this afternoon I'm going to go in, do my uh, brush width and then go through and get all the edges uh, so that they're all sealed. Then when I do my actual gunnel strips, uh, I just ran these through the planer. They're just slightly under a quarter inch. I think they're five thirty seconds. So, so I actually um, uh, used a dial or a digital caliper on those. And again, this is the white oak. Um, I think this is uh, about the thickness I want or the thinness I want. Uh, again, this will go inside. And the reason I was using the white oak or a hardwood on this is this is the area that takes the beating when you're putting them in the back of a truck or on top of a car, whatever it is. And I did not want a soft wood. Um, I did the purple heart because I wanted a cool uh, contrast, dark light and so forth. So the oak uh, I'm using for uh, rigidity. And then obviously the decks are going to take a big beating as well, but that's just going to be part of it. But the rails uh, here, the gunnels are what are really important in terms of having some strength to uh, the canoe when you're putting it uh, in position. Uh, I did find some old canoe um, seats the, when I was uh, changing out my uh, uh, old town. Uh, I didn't realize I had ordered quite a few in order to get different sizes and so, so forth. So I'm going to trim the front edge. I'm going to build a riser block and I'm going to pop this in. I'm going to recycle or repurpose uh, some things that I've done because if I've got it, I might as well use it. Uh, I will demonstrate uh, probably tomorrow the foot braces because we're going to start putting in those anchor points for these two pieces. I kind of want it still unsanded. Um, or I want it sanded down uh, before we put a clear coat on with those pieces in, then I do the final uh, clear coat all over all of that, and then I don't have to mess with any touch-ups. So uh, we will install the uh, gunnel sides, we will start to install this, and then the foot braces. Uh, pay, keep paying attention, we'll see what we can get done in the next couple of days before the clear coat arrives. All right, so in the time lapse, you just saw me uh, go ahead and put it in position. Uh, if I had a lot of sniping from the planer on either side, I could go ahead and cut that first and then set it up. But because most of this, the edge work is going to be underneath the deck, it's not going to be that big of a deal in terms of what you see. All right, so I made my mark. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off with a uh, pull saw. And then uh, I think I'm gonna be ready to go ahead and epoxy it. It's pretty warm right now. We're at 80 some degrees, 86 degrees, 87 degrees. So my concern is, can I get a line of epoxy all the way on this and pressed up uh, in enough time? Because it did go pretty quick uh, yesterday when I was doing this back section, it, it gelled up really fast. So again, it's one of those do I do it now? Do I do it late at night? Or do I do it early in the morning? And the more you do, you get kind of a better feel. Uh, being my first one, I'm still learning a lot of the, the turning curves as to how this sets up. Let's give it a try. All right, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. I have some 207 hardener, which is a uh, slow set. No, pardon me. The 207 is the extra clear. The 206 is a slow, um, a slower hardener uh, on that. So because of our temperatures right now, low humidity, I'm going to go ahead and run with the, um, the 206 uh, to get a little bit more time to work with this just in case. But uh, hopefully that'll all turn out well. And that's from my other skin on frame canoe that we did. We didn't need clarity. So let's give this a shot. This is going to go all along the inside edge. And then we're going to clamp that down onto the, uh, the gunnel side. So here we go.
All right, there you have it. That's about all the clamps I really have. So I will do this one side at a time. But again, you notice I was able to just kind of go quickly through, coat it, pop it on, and uh, now my uh, gunnels are set. We'll let this uh, go for a few hours, and then I need to clean up over here uh, with some of the epoxy before uh, putting on that gunnel. So again, I gotta do all of the edges in beh uh, behind, and then uh, we'll be ready to put this on maybe late tonight or early tomorrow morning. But at least you gotta see what it looked like, and uh, it does go fairly quick even when you're doing just the one piece at a time. Easily uh, uh, manageable when you do it that way.